so how's it been going? How how is sales training going? We do small groups. Tell me about your how, your thoughts and your feelings on how sales training's been going. You've been through a lot of groups and a lot of people, but they're small groups. So how's it been yeah. going? I I love the fact that they're small groups and that they're actually sharing information offline too, and they're keeping each other's information. They're really becoming you know, like a team, like they're, they're kind of each other's almost like their, their confidence. They help with that confidence, right? Um, just being, helping them with accountability, just being there for them. I, I know that we started encouraging, like you guys keep each other's info, go on LinkedIn, like each other, get each other's numbers. Um, one of our groups in particular, um, Rodney, Tag and Dennis, this was the last one last week, they graduated. Mm-hmm. They were, they were just so impressive. And they were, became such good friends. And they were calling each other with ideas. And it was just the best. And I think that camaraderie is really, like key for this. And they're, they're not in the same area or anything, but they were bouncing ideas off of each other. And just wow, just to see them like flourish, like Rodney's out there getting it. And it's just the cutest thing. And Tag and Dennis too, like, Dennis has so much experience, but, and he was like schooling me and I was schooling him back and Annette was schooling him back. And it was just like, (laughs) wow, you know, like, and he was like, you know, I love when they're accepting of what we have to say, even though he's probably been doing it forever and a day. Right. And so have we, but he, anyone who's takes in, even though they've been doing it and they take in what, what we're saying, I think that that's so awesome. Sorry. My little thing just fell off my, my, uh, Camera, but yeah, I think it's it's awesome to see that too. Yeah, so the camaraderie, the accountability, I, all of that. I love the small groups too because I think even salespeople they're supposed to be outgoing and comfortable in their own skin and all the things. I've been in sales for a long time, and you're not. You're just not always out there and comfortable in your own skin. And so I think the small group provides a very trusting environment. And they will eventually, it takes a couple weeks, I, I'd say, they will eventually share the most embarrassing thing. Or when I walked in, I just didn't feel like they were going to let me in the building. And then they did. And I was so surprised. Like they will share anything and everything. And that's how you learn. If you're in right. a huge group, you just don't get that. You just don't get to be yourself. And if you're not yourself, you're just not learning what you could be learning. I also like that it lasts for 12 weeks because it takes longer. I have trained so many salespeople and it does take that long because they have to learn what to do, completely understand it, go do it and have some fails, have some successes and come back and have somebody to say, to talk to about it. Like I went in and she rolled her eyes or I went in and she told me she's working with other companies and she doesn't need to talk to me. And like so many, you can't even in one sitting prepare them for all the things that could go down because <laughs> you don't know. There's always something new, something different that happens, you know? So I think being able to learn it, leave, try it and come back 12 times is huge. That's it's, there's, there's just no replacement for that. It, it's absolutely necessary to really feel comfortable enough to go do it without any safety net <laughs> eventually. Right, right, right. I'm right there. <laughs> okay, so um, I love having the small groups. I think, you know, it's really interesting. S- sometimes we have um, class members that are so experienced, like Lisa mentioned, you know, they're, they were schooling us. Some are brand new, never been marketing. And it's just really good to have everybody together um, because they're able to share, they help each other. Um, and we, and I think by having the small groups, it's really a very personal um, training where we get to know each other each week and um, help everybody. Um, they have time to ask questions. Um, I just, I have a class today that somebody just, they have an obstacle they're, they're you know, having issues with going into a sniff. And I said, you know, let's save that for class. I'm going to talk to it at class so we could all, you know, talk about it together. Um, And I just, like Dawn said, um, the 12 weeks, each week, everybody comes back and they're growing and they're answering questions. And by week 12, it's just so great to see how everybody has blossomed and that they have, you know, they've, they have referrals, they've received private pay clients. um, They've got past the gatekeeper. um, They've had lunch and learns. So I just, it's just a really great opportunity 
for everybody to get together and get to know each other. And like Lisa said too, um, we have people that have become friends and shared their phone numbers and emails and, you know, they're continuing on with their journey. Um, and they learned them. They, they met them at our sales training. Mm -hmm. And how, how, uh, how long do you think in the 12 weeks of training, how long does it take for someone generally speaking, either to get a lunch and learn established or to get a referral? What do those timelines look like? Well, I can tell you at the six week mark, if it hasn't happened, we're freaking out. <laughs> right. We six are weeks. freaking out. We're having a powwow. The three of us talk, sit and like, so-and-so is struggling. I'm not sure what's going on. And we freak out. And so if by week six, which is the halfway point, a lunch and learn isn't scheduled or they're not getting referrals, we will figure it out. And Nanette meets with them privately to discuss it. You know, usually it's because we have a one through seven list. Yes. Have mm -hmm. you done the one through seven? And usually mm -hmm. <laughs> they haven't done one through seven and several of the one through sevens have not been done. And so there's you, that's usually the reason um, but even if it's not, I know, Annette, you meet with them privately outside of class to help them, you know, and sometimes it's just like, I, you know, they'll say like, I, I listened to everything you said, and I know it'll work. I just don't know if I can do it. You know, they're just not. And we have to tell them, you got to go, you got to do it. And so maybe you pick a smaller skilled nursing facility, or maybe you start in assisted living or somewhere where they're more open arms. Come on in. We'd love to talk to you. You know, you start there to build your confidence and then go to the the higher, the harder ones, right? I don't, I, Lynette, what are those conversations like for you? Because I've, I've had several of them with my own private, you know, people that I've trained, you know, at work, but how are those conversations going for you? Yeah. So I think definitely by week six, I mean, sometimes we have by week four <laughs> um, and, you know, I try to remind them every week, you know, if you're doing you know, we, we try to hold them accountable. We give them little homework. You know, it's nothing too hard because we're know they're, we know they're busy and they're working in the crazy home care world. So we know what sometimes, you know, we're not giving them too much, but we're giving them enough that they need to get out there and at least try to, you know, you know, get past that gatekeeper. Um, I do, you know, many times, you know, people are struggling, class members, and I'll meet with them privately. And sometimes it just takes a little pep talk and and then I'll get a text from them the next day and they'll say, thank you so much for that pep talk. Um, my meeting went great. I did wonderful. So I, they, they just need encouragement sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some, it, that's really it. And I think, you know, that's the nice thing about having the small classes. I'm able to reach out yeah. to each of the class members and have private conversations, phone calls. Um, you know, pr we do that often and I'm happy to do that. And I always let them know. I'm here to help you. So give me a call. If you're struggling with anything, let me know. That's great. And I do see the messages sometimes in the CRM going back and forth, you know, the texting and, and things like that. And so I know that these folks really rely on you guys to help mm -hmm. them to answer their questions. Sometimes it, it's an odd hour, not in the middle of the night, but I mean, you know, sometimes I see stuff come through at the end of my day or at the very right in the you know morning, I can see. So I know that that they really do. Um, you guys really do not just during class, but during the course of the week are reaching out to people and finding out how they're doing. I can see all that. And I think that, you know, really makes them feel good. And they trust you that they can reach out to you and get some help or answers or pep talk or whatever it is that they might need. Uh, what about, let's talk about the handouts. So we created, uh, when Dawn created this, uh, the whole curriculum, she also has leave behinds that she created that have different messages or so like a discharge package or what happens when people get home from the sniff or, you know, the cost of care, things like that. Do you find that people are using those? Yes. I think that in the beginning, um, they look at them and they think, oh, these are great. And, you know, as we've been getting from class to class and probably mm -hmm. even just the first class, you know, if they, they weren't getting the referral or we could just tell that they weren't maybe using them 
we would have the conversation, well, did you go out with what we told you to, to the SNP? Because we know this is going to get you past the gatekeeper. Oh, no, I just brought my brochure. And I'm, we're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you have to use what we're telling you to use. And so now Annette has made that a homework assignment. The very first one that is almost guaranteed to get you into the SNPs to talk to the right person in the skilled nursing facility. It, it's worked for me for years and years and years. And so now we make it a homework assignment to get that created and they send it to Annette. And all it is, is they're putting their logo on it and their phone number. That's it. It's a very simple thing. But I think some people feel challenged by that, um, doing that. And so Annette is also in class showing them how to get your phone number and your logo on this 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 leave behind so that you can go in with it and be successful. And how is it, you've changed that now and how is that going? Is that better now? Um, you know, finishing the video sales training, we make customized leave behinds for everybody. So I've been encouraging, you know, some of the class members aren't able to watch the videos before they start class. So I really try to keep up with everybody and check, have you been watching them? Um, make sure you, you know, finish the videos. Um, it's, because we're going to make these customized um, leave behinds for you. And I, people are using them. They love them. Um, I do think in, now that I'm using it as a homework assignment for um, everybody to use the discharge package, um, they have been using it. We do keep, I keep trying to remind everybody that like Don had said, you know, you can't just bring your brochure. Mm -hmm. This is going to get you in. This is different. We want you to be different from every other home care agency that's just dropping off a brochure and a pen. You have a discharge package. You have a special package for, you know, assisted living, memory care, hospice. We we have leave behinds for every every referral source. So it, it's been very helpful and they've been using them and have had success. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Well, I and I I'm I'm glad that that you made that a homework assignment because I think it helps people understand you're not you know, you're you're telling you're giving them the whole recipe they need to go out and use it um oh, let's have a little bit about after training is over continuum sales mastery circle so one so, of the things that that we offer and we do this every other friday pretty much is ongoing support that is in a less structured in way um it's it's you know you can attend any every other Friday meeting and it's a larger group. So let's talk about uh continuum mastery circle. And I know you guys work really hard to make sure you either have a guest speaker or a great topic to present that continues that sales training and that enthusiasm and that, you know, pep talk long after sales training is over. So um, how, you know, how important is it or how do you feel about people attending continuum sales mastery after training is over? I think it's so important because as, as Annette said, you know, and we've all been saying the brochure is not enough. You can bring it, you know, of course they need it, but that isn't making you different in this market. It's not completely saturated, but there are areas I'm in Arizona. Oh my, is it saturated? We probably have close to a thousand home care agencies really and so, you know, you do walk in and they say, I'm working with 10. I don't need to talk to you. Yes, they do. You have to differentiate yourself. How are you going to do that? And it's not just once you it's almost like being at a restaurant and they have to redo the menu monthly. Right. Reinvent yourself every single month to keep people coming. So in mastery, not only are we giving you ideas to reinvent yourself, we're actually creating the leave behinds for you to reinvent yourself. Every single month, Lisa makes three to four leave behinds for you. You got to go back every eight to 10 days. You can't go back with the same thing every eight to 10 days. And you're not going to get a face to face every time. You shouldn't expect one. You have to leave something behind. And we create those for you. There's no thinking, God, when I did this, I would have, I would have done anything to come to something like this where they're coming up with the ideas. And you do need a face to face once a month. Lisa's even making a leave behind that's guaranteed to get them to come out of their office and see your face because they need that to remember yeah. who you are and what you do and why you're different. Oh, that's her. That's right. That's the one I want to refer to. That's what they think when they see you. So if you're coming to mastery, you're getting educated every, you know, we twice a month, we're educating about something. We have guest speakers. 
We teach you about everything in home care. I mean, it's not as involved as, as our sales training, obviously, but after sales training, you need this to keep it going. You've got to have something new every month, two or three things every single month to make you stand out, to make you be different, to keep your relationship more as a partnership than a referral source, like a source, like they see you as a home care source. That's not bad. But if you're their partner, that's so much better. And these right. leave behinds and coming and it keeps you motivated. I mean, I just can't say enough. We would spend where I worked got a whole entire hour, maybe two hours a month trying to figure out what are we doing this month or what we were always a couple months ahead, but what are we doing? And then we'd figure it out. Okay. Well, what does that look like and who's going to make it? And then it, it's just a lot. It's all done. And so I, I just can't say enough about everybody should be going to mastery who's in home care. But if you've been to the sales training, you need ongoing, you need the ongoing information and training, I would say. Yeah. I, I think it's so important too, because it just reinforces all of that in the sales training, as well as just what you should be doing out in the field all the time. And it gives you literally like in a nice little almost package of, you know, your three months out of what you can be using to go out and talk to those people you need to talk to, those partners or to, to make them partners. Um, and it's not just lead behinds, but like you said, there's, we're creating at least one to get in front of someone. Like we have to coordinate something. There's a need to talk to that social worker at that sniff or there's, you know, and then the others are, some of them are fun, some of them are corny, but that's good. People need to see your heart out there too and see that you're a real live person and see your authentic you, right? So I love that we have the, you know, at least three months out with the different leave behinds. And then it again, reinforcing and they have us right there in, in almost the flesh to ask questions, you know, um, and to kind of lead the next mastery if they wish. They could ask us anything and we could create a whole, you know, presentation on on that if it's something like that. But um, yeah, I really love how, where it's going from where it started to where it's it's evolving. Um, and just again, reinforcing what people should be doing out there if they want to get that, you know, 90% referral business, you know, like 90% of your business should be those referrals, those partners. I think too, what we also do in mastery that is really helpful is we stay on the timeline of like the year. So I know we all know if you've been in home care for a long time, we know it's going to slow down in December. It just, we have, you know, seniors die in December. I'm not sure what it is or why it is, but I've seen it for close to 20 years. It happens. We know <laughs> this is coming. And so in October, the beginning of this month, we talked about how to pad right now your billing so that when December hits, it doesn't hurt. I don't can't tell you how many years in a row I missed my annual goal because of December. <laughs> it's painful. <Right. laughs> it messed it up for me because I'm going along every month. We're doing this. We're growing. We're growing, growing. December comes, boom, crash. And I don't hit my annual goal and uh, billing. And so we, in October, start padding. We start telling you how to pad, what to do so that right. when December hits, it doesn't hurt as much. We know around springtime, the caregivers quit applying. The ones you have don't want to work. So we're going to address that in January before it happens. So you have enough caregivers to get you through. So it's not just the leave behinds. It's not just the education. We're also keeping you on that annual timeline and preparing you for things that are coming that you may not even know might be coming yet. So mm -hmm. there's also that piece of it in Mastery Circle as well that I think yep. would really have been helpful for me years ago when, you know, when I didn't know to expect that. And I meet with these ladies, you know, we're all from different parts of the country and it's the same. It's the same. We've been doing the exact same thing for close to 20 years and we've all been really successful and we had the same December let down the same caregiver thing in April like it's the same across the country so to me that brought me some it's frustrating but it brought me some comfort to know that it's been going on everywhere it, it, this is the way it works this is how home care works and if you want to be successful you need to do xyz and we'll give you the xyz and that too is what I love about mastery is that we have all these experiences, right? Because in home care, you wear all sorts of hats mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we keep the top, the topic, yeah, it's heavy on the sales and marketing, uh, but there's also operations. There's also, you know, like the priority list. I feel like that's pretty, pretty operations, like 
how do I take the calls? What do I do? What are the intakes? How do I, how do I answer the phone? You know, those type of things as well as caregiver slowdown, caregiver hiring, retention, recruitment. So um, I like that we touch all topics that have to do with home care, period. And KPIs, we can't forget the KPIs. KPIs. <laughs> all departments. I know many people just hate that stuff. I don't know. I'm fascinated by it. But you, you're more fascinated when you hit your numbers, I guess. So, yes. you know, like it's not fun to have KPIs if you're not hitting your numbers, but we can help you get there. Um, I do want to say, too, uh, uh, many of the class members attend the mastery um, while attending because it's free when they're in sales training. And when the 12 weeks is up, you know, they ask me, you know, how much longer am I going to be in this? I'm like, you have one, you know, two weeks after they I'm going to ask my boss. I want to continue. I mean, to keep they many of them want to continue on because it's keeping them being motivated. We're still giving them the the leave behinds. Um, so it's I think it's a great you know, continuation of the sales training. Um, and many, many of the sales, uh, the people attending the classes are continuing on. Mm -hmm. And like I said, they're asking their bosses and, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. Cause they're, they're thinking, oh my God, it's going to end. Yeah. It's all right, coming yeah. to an end. You know, the 12 weeks, they, I think they realize, you know, but coming to mastery for free during that 12 weeks, they, they right. see like the value and how much it's helping them, even outside of sales training, they're even getting more in mastery. And when they start thinking, okay, my, I'm at week 10, what's going to happen? I think that's when they start, they start yeah. out like, okay, you know, am I ready to fly out of this nest all by myself? Yep. <laughs> you don't they, really they're... have to completely if yep. you stay in mastery. So that part, and they're connected with us that way too. You know, they can send us a quick text. They can, they get to stay connected. We also have our forum. It's our um, mastery circle forum where they can go in. It's an app on your cell phone. You can see what other people are doing. You can ask questions in there. Um, the forum has been really, really helpful. People ask some really good questions. They give us topics for mastery. Um, and just some of the questions they ask are really thoughtful and really help everybody else in mastery. So you are forever connected to this, this group here on the screen, but also people nationwide that are going through some of the same things. It's, it's funny when, when I would train somebody just in, a, you know, when I was in home care, they would say, oh my gosh, the worst thing ever happened to me. And they would tell me, I'm like, oh, that happens all the time. And so I think it's just that, or I've been to this sniff six times and I haven't gotten in yet. Oh, that's normal. Like, I just think knowing that those things are normal and other people right. have gone through it and they've had the exact same experience or maybe even worse than you. And they still stood up, dusted themselves off and went right back in there again, because you have to. And knowing that it's possible to bounce back from that. I mean, you don't know that unless you have this community surrounding you and supporting you and hearing that in mastery in forum in sales training you know you you need that to give you the confidence to keep going because it, it can be hard and if you're having a rough day i've always told my people go to a senior center go hang out go sign a client like go go be back into the purpose of why you're doing this in the first place that always rejuvenates you go visit one of our 24-hour clients go hang out with them go sit with them for a while Get back to the why, you know, everyone in this industry, if you're going to survive in this industry, there has to be a passion that your heart has to be involved because mm -hmm. it's too hard. It's way too hard yeah. to stay if you don't have a true calling, a true passion for this industry. So if you're feeling mm -hmm. disconnected, you're having a hard time, you get up on Monday and like, I just can't do it. I can't be the cheerleader today. I can't go sit in a snip and get turned down, turned away, see the eye roll, whatever it is mm -hmm. today. I just don't have it. Go visit a 24-hour client. Go mm -hmm. sit with them. Go go reconnect. Go to assisted living and you know, go go do a craft with somebody, with the, the people in assisted living. You know, get permission. Of course, you can't just go sit in it. <laughs> go reconnect. I'm here. Yeah, right. I, yeah, yeah. Do craft. I have done that. Is there any bingo going on? Anything happening, Dave? Can I help serve meals? Like, because I just needed that that pump up. I needed to get back into the the heart, I needed to get my heart involved again. I think it disconnects sometimes and you've got to get it, re plug it back in to get, get motivated again. So we teach that all the things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Go somewhere that, that, that you get some love for sure. Yes. The love is important. Uh, and so let's talk about um, uh, the marrying of online marketing with the in-person marketing. So I see lots of posts 
from our clients that have exactly what you told them to do <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, in their pictures. We have a few that that are very um, regular about posting their leave behinds, their pictures, what they're doing. And that's great. They should be doing that. All of everyone should be doing that on LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, and they hold up their leave behind or they have a little picture of what they're doing today. And that just warms my heart that mm-hmm. it, 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 it's not just we're not just y'all aren't just talking out of your head. You're you're in just it's not going into the ether and never happening. These people really are taking this seriously and they really are making a difference for their home care agency. We have a few that are absolutely killing it and uh, they use a lot of the stuff that you guys, and and I know it's not all about leave behinds, but I coming back to that, having three months in advance of, of what it is that's coming and how to plan ahead for it, because some of these projects are kind of um, involved a little bit for, especially for the holidays um, around like for, from Halloween all the way through Christmas, there's a, a few things you can do that really involve the community, that really involve a lot of different people. Um, they're not that hard to put together, but they really are um, a very much a community oriented type of leave behind. And I think that's amazing. And so having three months in advance warning of of what this is, but it makes a huge difference. And, and Dawn has uh, put together a couple of things that people ask you for every single year when you were doing this. Well, and that's not, that's not yeah. an accident because once I yeah. realized, okay, this is going to happen every December, right? It's going to yeah. drop every December. I need something to pad. So it's not an accident that October, November, December is chock full of things that are going to show your heart, bring people out to see you, begging you every August where I'm going to get to do that again, right? Don't forget me in October, November, December. I want to be a part of this. Please don't forget the social workers texting you and begging you to please come by and make sure they're a part of it again this year because it was so successful. So that's not an accident. I didn't want, I needed to pad and that's that's what we help you with and mastery. And as far as marrying the online and the foot feet on the ground, the in-person, absolutely has to happen. We're in 2024 and I have to say of all industries, home care is a little behind on the online stuff. It just is. Yeah. The websites are hokey. We, you know, they're not posting online. You might see a post, gosh, you know, I, you, you get on some home care Facebooks and it's been three years since there was a post or there's no blog. There's no blog on the website for two or three years. It looks terrible, people. It looks terrible. You have to come in to 2024. You have to, you, you just have to bite the bullet and do it. And marrying the two is so important. The social workers mm-hmm. see your face. They introduce you to an adult child who's going to check you out. I've mm-hmm. had social workers say to me, you're great. You're nice. Your brochure is good. What does your website look like? If I refer another company <laughs> that doesn't mm-hmm. have a website or it's a landing page, the adult children come back and say, who is this company? Did you look at their website? They don't want that to come back on them. Mm-hmm. It, it's the full package. you got to be doing it all. The adult children are online. They're looking at your website. They need to see you're involved in the community where their parents live. They get on your Facebook. If you're doing a, you're, you know, participating in a blood drive, you're walking in the Alzheimer's walk, you're doing, you know, bringing poinsettias to your clients at Christmas time, whatever it is, it all needs to be documented. It needs, it shows your heart and soul of the company. It needs to be on your website. It needs to be on your social media. It's not enough anymore to just be doing it in person. It's just not. You have to marry your feet on the ground, your sales, to what you're doing online because it's two different audiences. Your social right. workers see you in person. They see the leap behind. They see you on LinkedIn and mm-hmm. the adult children are seeing you everywhere else. And mm-hmm. you've got to have an up-to-date website. And, and if it's not working fast and it doesn't have the right words, Google's not going to rank you anyway. So, so what's the point? Like you've got to update, you've got to stay with the times. And it's frustrating for me because healthcare seems to be lacking more than any industry that I've, that I've ever looked at. It it seems to be that home care is really, really lacking in that area. So let's, let's get it going. (laughs) 
It's interesting too, because I tell people, well, you have this, you took care of your location, right? Your office location, you made it pretty, you painted it up. People know how to get there, right? But no one's coming here anyways, except for caregivers. Like, you know, your caregivers are coming here, but not your, your clients, unless you're having like an open house. You should do the same with your website. You need to pretty it up. People need to know directions, how to get there. People need to, you know, and, and that's keywords and, and locations and all of that. So you want to pretty up your online, just like you did your you know, pink paint and your logo on your wall and all of that, you want to do the same for your for your website and your Google business profile and all of your social channels that are connected. Um, that's so really that important. Lisa. I've never, I've never thought about it like that. But that's true, because it is your office location online. It is yes. the way your building looks. If a caregiver walked in to your building, and you want them to work for you, and you need caregivers, right? You right. can't do this business without them. And it's grungy and dark and it smells funky. And yeah, and yeah, yeah. And so you would never, ever allow that. And your online presence, that's your office space for those adult yeah. children and social workers and anybody else doing your a search. And so the website has to look professional and look good. And for, as far as Google's concerned, you have to have the right keywords and content on the website or you're not going to rank. So you have to be taking care of all of it. It's it's not a, oh, my office is great. I have a Facebook page. I'm, I'm done. It's just, it just yeah. doesn't work that way anymore. It just doesn't. It's like if you bought, a, bought an office in the middle of nowhere and you made it beautiful, but no one knows it's there. They don't know how to get there. They don't know the name. They don't, you know, right. it's, it's just sitting there and it's wasted space. So if you take care of it and you have the right, you know, SEO and, and everything that's built in, then you're, you're sitting pretty and right. people are find you and they see how beautiful your website is and it's informative and it makes sense. It's relevant. Um, you know, then you're sitting pretty. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I always uh, say, you know, they say you should not judge a book by its cover, but everybody does. We do. They do. <laughs> first, we do so. first impression is an important one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, regarding the leave behinds, I actually just got a text from a past, um, class member that sent me what she's doing for Halloween. Mm -hmm. I have to say, Lisa is so creative in these leave behinds yes. and everybody gets just so excited mm -hmm. because it gives <laughs> the motivation to get out there and, you know, do a pumpkin decorating contest, drop off a, you know, um, snappy discharges. Um, mm -hmm. People are posting what they're doing on LinkedIn and Facebook mm -hmm. and they're, the referral sources are excited because they're they're seeing something creative and something different than just that brochure. So the leave behinds are just so important. And I, I've had many of the class members, you know, tell me, you know, I, I never them. did this before. I never left anything fun or, you know, holiday related and they're having success. So it really does work. Yeah. Yes. And if you're afraid to take like this next move, because you don't know, what you don't know, right? I mean, that that is the scary part about, okay, yeah, my website's probably cheesy. It's been five years or three years or whatever, but I don't know what to do. And I know, we all know, we've been in home care for years. You don't have time to think about your website. You don't have time right. to invest in social media and all that. But that's why we're here because you don't yeah. have the time. And what's different about us is we have people that have been I like to call it in the trenches of home care. I know that may be not a nice way to say, it, but that's how it feels. You are in the trenches, like Mondays and Fridays, especially you're just burning at both ends and you don't have time to do this. You just need to make the call. We'll do it. There's nothing for you to do, right? Yeah. I mean, you just need to, you need to take the step though. You got to make the call. You got to reach out because it's hurting your business because if one, if somebody has your web address because of a social worker, your brochure, they look you up in the website, doesn't look modern and professional and all the things, that's not good. Two, if you're not ranking, you're not going to show up anyway when someone does a search in your area. Someone's going to even see it. So it's time. I, this is your, this is your, if you've been thinking about it and it bothers you a little bit, or you've hired a new, a new marketer and they're going, oh man, you know, I can go out and do all of this, but that website, like I, the marketers call me, can you call yes. my owner please and talk to them about the website? How am I supposed to sell when this is what they see when they get online? Can you please help me? Like we get these calls all the time. So if you're waiting for a sign, here it is. This is your sign. It's time. Yeah. 
And it does help support that infield marketing person as well. It does. I mean, it absolutely clearly. does. Your so Facebook, your link, make it easier for them, right? Like make it easier. You're paying them. They're, you know, they're not cheap. You're paying them. Make it easier for them. Yeah. It's already a difficult job. At least Amen. get the website, the <laughs> ranking, the social media going for them. It is going to help them do their job better. Absolutely. I totally agree. I totally agree. Don't invest. If you're going to invest in someone who's out in the field, then you need to also invest on how the rest of your, and it is an investment mm -hmm. in the look and the quality of your online presence. Super. And it's hard, I think too, is, you know, when you go in and you see the social worker and they're fall in love with you and you're great and you're professional and they get to your website and they're thinking, how did they even get this marketer? You know, or I, you yeah. know, how, how did they land this person? Because she's so good and she's so professional. And then they get on your website and they're like, this doesn't add up. So yeah, help them. You've got, if you've got, you know, you want to go to the next level and you've hired that person that's going to make you look good in the field. You need to make them look good online. Absolutely. Yeah.